Hello and welcome back to Counting Rocks, an introduction to combinatorics at CSU. Today we're going to be talking about generating functions, one of my favorite topics in combinatorics. A generating function, as Herbert Wilf said, is a clothesline on which to hang a sequence of numbers up for display. Here's where we're going to start using algebra to analyze combinatorics. Here's an example of a generating function. Say we have the Fibonacci sequence, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. All you do is you make these the coefficients of a power series. 0 plus x plus x squared plus 2x cubed plus 3x to the 4th plus 5x to the 5th plus 8x to the 6th plus 13x to the 7th. The coefficients are 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. Now, this gadget isn't necessarily a convergent function for various values of x. It's actually just a clothesline. We're thinking of x as just a formal variable. It's really just a symbol that we're using the exponents on to indicate that we're at the third position or the fourth position in the sequence, and the coefficients are reporting the sequence. So I want to just think of it as a different way of writing down a sequence for now. Here's the official definition and some examples. So the generating function of an infinite sequence a0, a1, a2, dot, 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 is we often write a of x, like capital A, if it's a lowercase a sequence, that's just convention. And it's a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus dot, 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 or sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of a sub nx to the n is another, another way of writing it down. For instance, the generating function of the all one sequence is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. We can use a different variable too, by the way. We can do a of y and then replace the x's with y. We can use any symbol for x. It could be a star, it could be a smiley face, whatever you like. It's just a formal symbol. The generating function of the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 is 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed, etc. Again, we're just using the powers of x as the clothesline hangers to hang up your sequence of numbers for display. Now we're going to get into, in the next video, how to manipulate generating functions and use them to do some combinatorics. But for now, we're going to look back at polynomials, which are an example of generating functions, if you think about it the right way. In particular, if you have an infinite sequence that after a while is all zeros, like 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, up to infinity, then that can be thought of as a finite polynomial, because in some sense you can think of 0x cubed and 0x to the fourth and so on as just not showing up. You don't have to write the zero terms. So this is actually a polynomial generating function, 1 plus 2x plus x squared, for a finite sequence. Here's another famous finite sequence we've dealt with a lot, the nth row of Pascal's triangle, n choose 0, n choose 1, up to n choose n. And so we can make a finite polynomial out of that, and that generating function factors as 1 plus x to the n. Factoring generating functions is going to be a very powerful tool in solving for the coefficients or understanding the coefficients in a more combinatorial way. Here's a concrete example of what we can do with polynomial generating functions. Say you have seven pennies and two nickels. How many ways can you make six cents? Well, we can just write them down. Either you can use one penny and one nickel to make six cents, because a nickel is worth five cents, or just six of the pennies, because you have seven pennies. Now, let's actually break this down, though, into, say we wanted to say, how many ways can you make all numbers of cents and record that as a sequence? You can actually relate it to two existing sequences just for the pennies and just for the nickels. The number of ways to make change for zero, one, two, three cents, etc., with the pennies is, well, you can either use one penny, two pennies, three pennies, four pennies, etc., up until you get to more than seven pennies, then there's no ways to do it with the seven pennies. And you only have two nickels, so how can you make change with zero, for zero cents, one cent, two cents, etc.? You can use zero nickels to make change for zero cents. You can use one nickel to make change for five cents, or you can use two nickels to make change for 10 cents, and then it's all zero after that. Now let's consider the generating functions for these two sequences. So here's the generating function for the pennies. One plus x plus x squared plus x cubed up to x to the seventh. It's nice that the power of seven actually shows you how many ones there were in that sequence. It records how many pennies we had. And similarly for the nickels, we have either zero nickels or one nickel or two nickels for making change. And so the generating function is one plus x to the fifth plus x to the tenth, and it stops there. And notice that the two ways of making change for six cents is either you have one penny and one nickel corresponding to the x and the x to the fifth, or six pennies, which is the x to the sixth term, and zero nickels, which corresponds to the one here. So that's all ways of choosing one thing from here and one thing from here whose product is x to the sixth, because the product adds the exponents. Those products exactly correspond to taking this polynomial times this polynomial, expanding it out, and looking for the x to the sixth term. 
So let's do this. Instead of saying we have seven pennies and two nickels, say we have one plus x plus x squared up to x to the seventh and one plus x to the fifth plus x to the tenth. How many ways can you make x to the sixth in the product? Well, let's expand it out. And we get this expansion and we do see that the x to the sixth term has a coefficient of two. And so this is a generating function for the number of ways to make change for any amount of cents using seven pennies and two nickels. And so you can actually just read off from this expansion, which, we didn't, which I did in Sage, for instance, that there's two ways of making 10 cents, there's two ways of making 12 cents, there's only one way of making 13 cents, there's no way of making 18 cents, that's too big, right? So you can actually read off of this generating function just by multiplying these two generating functions, what all the answers for how to make change for every single possible number of cents is, without actually doing every computation individually. This is the power of generating functions. They can do large computations all at once using algebra instead of individual computations for each coefficient. Let's expand the making change problem a little bit to really show the power of it. How many ways can we make 32 cents using pennies, dimes, nickels, and quarters? But wait a minute! We didn't specify how many pennies, how many dimes, how many nickels, and how many quarters we have. All we can do is say, well, it looks like we have as many pennies, nickels, and dimes, and quarters as we want, but we can still make the problem finite by saying, hey, we're not going to use more than 32 pennies, right? That already gets us up to 32 cents. We're not going to use more than six nickels. That gets us up to 30 cents. We're not going to use more than three dimes. That gets us up to 30. Um, we're not going to use more than one quarter. Any other amount of any of these coins would be too big, so we have no reason to use them. So we can use the polynomials 1 plus x plus x squared up to x to the 32 for the pennies, and 1 plus x to the 5th plus x to the 10th, all the multiples of 5 in the exponents for the nickels, 1 plus x to the 10th plus x to the 20th plus x to the 30th for the dimes, because they're 10 cents each, and 1 plus x to the 25th for the quarters. So we can actually just multiply these in Sage. Here's how I would code them in Sage. You would say, say, p is the sum of x to the i for i in range 33. We're summing a list, which I have in square brackets. For nickels, we would sum x to the 5 times i for i in range 7. The range number, you just put one higher than the maximum actual number of the objects you have. And then you expand the product, p times n times d times q, after you define these four things, and you ask for the coefficient of x to the 32, because it's asking how many ways can we make 32 cents. And it pops out the answer immediately, 17. That is a lot easier than systematically going through all the ways you can make 32 cents using pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. But it turns out there's 17 ways. Now, what are infinite generating functions for? Why can't we just use polynomials? Well, infinite generating functions encapsulate all of this arithmetic all at once. In particular, let c sub n be the number of ways of making n cents with pennies, dimes, nickels, and quarters. What's the generating function c of x for the sequence c sub n? So now, instead of stopping at 32 for pennies and stopping at 30 for nickels and so on, we can actually just consider the infinite generating functions for all the ways of making change with just pennies or just nickels or just dimes or just quarters, and then multiply them all, and you get the generating function for that sequence c sub n. So it kind of solves all the possible problems with these four coins all at once out to infinity. And notice that it's actually sort of a generalization of the multiplication principle. You're choosing some number of pennies and some number of nickels and some number of dimes and some number of quarters, and that's another way of thinking about the power of generating functions. Multiplying polynomials can sometimes do a lot of multiplication principles all at once in combinatorics. So now you try. Let's change up the coins a little bit. On the planet Splink Tonk, there are two types of coins. Splinks, they're worth two cents each, and Tonks are worth seven cents each. No, you can't give somebody just one cent on the planet Splink Tonk. So multiply two polynomials together to see how many ways you can make change for various amounts if you have five Splinks and two Tonks. And that's all for today, and I'll see you next time.